Today I have an amazing guest. I have a beautiful show prepared for you guys. We're going to talk about books. We're going to talk about life. We're going to talk about life experiences. We're going to talk about um, things that really matter. The concept of uh, being able to put yourself together, loving yourself without you trying to prove a point to people. And my guest today is uh, an amazing friend of mine. She has a book hub. She's a reader, she loves studying, and is somebody that, you know, understands what she's talking about. So, uh, welcome, and yes, I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to today's reading. Today we are reading from Genesis chapter 9, and uh, I will read. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fall of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hands are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meant for you even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh, with the life of here thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall you not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hands of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whose sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Uh-huh. Who sheds what? If you shed blood, even your own blood will be shed. And you be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And God spoke unto Noah and said to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. And with every living creature that is with you of the fall of the cattle and of the of the very beast of the earth with you from all that goes out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my, cov- my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there be any more a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for the perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of the covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant. I will remember my covenant. God always remembers. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God saw it unto Noah. This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all the flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. And these are the three sons of Noah. And of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be a husband's man, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine, and was drunk it, and he was uncovered with his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it upon 
both their shoulders and went backward, and covered the nakedness of their father, and their faces were backward. And when they saw not their father's nakedness, and Noah awoke from his wine, and I and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cast be Canaan. A servant of all servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord of shame, and Canaan shall be his servant. And God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall en dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years, and all the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. What is the lesson? Cover your nakedness, and God will bless you. So that was our reading today. Uh, may God bless you. Yes. and thank you for having me. Yes, please yeah. welcome. Uh, you can thank just you. start by maybe you know by introducing yourself, giving us a little bit of background where like maybe you grew up and uh, where you went to school, <laughs> where, where, how you how you became the person that you are today. Uh huh. Now that you have mentioned it, I've yeah. just remembered I went to an all girls school <laughs> from primary to high school. University really? Sasan Dio at Lesi Wow. Mm. Ever since like you in primary school, you've always yes. been like in an all girls school. Well, it, it just hit me right now yeah, by the yeah, way when yeah. you mentioned school. Yeah. So my name is Esther yes. Wangoi. Yes. I'm a mother of two. I'm married yes. with two kids. Uh I live here, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I brought a guest yes. from somewhere else. Yes. And uh, I sell books. Yes. Besides that, I'm a literacy activist. Oh. I'm also a reading coach. Okay. That's what I love to do. Right. And um, where I grew up, I grew up in Western. Funny ah, thing, okay. yes. I thought it was Nakuru, actually. <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't born here. I've never asked that question before, so I thought it was like Nakuru. No, no, no. no. I wasn't born here. Mm. I was born in Mombasa. Mm. My parents shifted, okay. and they went to live in Western, in Vihiga, actually. Right. So Vihiga is where I've grown up. Which is interesting, because our our second guest in this show also is from Vihiga, so yeah. I don't know what is happening right now. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, so I grew up in Vihiga all the way. So I went to primary school mm -hmm. in St. Elizabeth. It was a Catholic school, ah. an all-girls Catholic school. So I went to St. Elizabeth mm. all I the way from... Though. In a Catholic all, school, yes, yes. it was extremely uh, structured. Yes. Everything was structured. From the moment you enter the school gates yes. to the moment you leave, everything is structured on what you should do. And it's, it's, all, it's based on those Catholic principles. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me right now, I still remember I the, the, the entire prayer, the, the prayers, the entire process. I still remember my sisters mm -hmm. because they, they are the ones who used to take us through the whole process. And all through, I used to be a leader in school. So most of the time, I used to interact with them. I, I was the one who was told, you know what? You're the one who has to uh, lead the students to the church, to the assembly, to whatever. So I still remember all those processes that involved going through a Catholic school. So I went to a Catholic school. It was a good experience. It structured me in such a good way. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, although there are the yeah. other side of effects, but yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I it was a good experience for me. So after that I went to Lemuru Girls High School mm -hmm. in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine I'm coming all the way from the village yes. then to Nairobi. Nairobi. To it was it was a culture shock for yes. me by the way because what before that, that like like stood out you're like how no idea what is going on right now. <laughs> like let me tread carefully here or I just embarrass myself. Uh, Did you have an accent? Uh, no, I didn't have an accent. Are you sure? I am so sure I didn't Are have an accent. Are you just covering up for yourself? No. <laughs> I didn't have an accent, by the way, because um, I think it was, it was yes, in the village, but yes. it was like a small town. Oh, so okay. the main language was Swahili. All right. And yes, uh, even though there was the tribe, the Luya, the Tiriki and all that, mm -hmm. but accent was... No, 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 no. So what I didn't was one of the culture shock from that set up to Nairobi? To well, I went to Lemuru Girls High School, then Unakutana Sasa na Watoto wa Nairobi. That's where you know pizza, you know deliveries, you know... <laughs> How do you know deliveries? <laughs> you, okay, the first time we went to Nairobi, we had to go and buy uniform from uh, uniform distributors. Right. I think 
uh, in River Road or somewhere there. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. And uh, going through the entire town was uh, like a, a, an entire new experience, experience the building, the whatever. Yeah. Nini, nini. Then when we were all done, it was time to sit down and eat chicken, those rotating yes, chicken yeah. on the windows. And yeah. I was like, oh my God. How do we start here? Do we use our hands? <laughs> and use our the hands, mouth, the napkins, the whatever. Yeah. It was such an experience for me. Then immediately after that, we went to school. We meet the girls. Everyone is from different perspective. Yes. And all of us are from, uh, most of us were, selected from the best schools because uh-huh. it was a national school yes. hey. so you meet the smartest of the hey. smartest there oh, yeah. oh, yeah. you just had to throw that in there you just had to yes it was place. it was such an experience for me and it was really nice growing up in in lemuro girls it's it's it showed so, me a side of life that I didn't know, you know, that growing up from uh, from one to from four, interacting with people from different backgrounds, it was it was a good experience. Then after that, I went to University of Nairobi. I did my degree in operations management. Then after that, I worked for some time for uh, for an NGO. Then I resigned. I started my own venture. So where, this is where where you are right now. Yes. Like like the job that you are in, you resigned. You I resigned my job. Or you did not get no. a job after university. No. You literally resigned. I, I really did why, why did you do that? <laughs> why did you do that? Well, because in the culture that we're in right now, people are like, you know what, you need to get a job. You just need to get a job. You just need to get a job. Now, somebody like you shows up and mm-hmm. is like, well, I resigned. I just started one thing. Why would you do that? <laughs> I'll, to be honest, yes. we live in a culture that praises money so much. Yes. But at the end of the day, we get to learn. Mm-hmm. It's not everything, you know. Mm-hmm. So it was a good job. It was an NGO job. It was paying well. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I used to sit at my desk and feel this is not it for me. Yeah. You know, there's that. I think when God yes. gives you a purpose, yes. no matter where you are, no matter. It, it, it will. This yeah, you know, good. you become like a, a caterpillar. Yeah who is just sitting there but is being poked each and every time by that purpose which you have. So I would go to my desk, sit, do the job. And the weird thing is also I used to work with women alone. It was an an African... (laughs) It was an an, an women enterprise, African women in agribusiness, women... So, you're not attracted to that because of like your past or like how did you end up there again? Because I listen, think, uh, you, you went to an all girls primary school and then um, uh, all girls high, high school, school, university, and then mm. you found yourself in an organization that deals solely <laughs> with women. Yeah, it's, I think there's a way the environment that you have grown up in, in yeah. that you have become accustomed to, yes, yeah. there's a way it keeps reflecting uh, in your life you over and over, yes, yeah. and it, it duplicates itself. Wherever yeah. you go, it's like you carry yes. yourself or you're always attracted yeah, to, to of something of yes. the sort. Yeah. So it's like that environment, just it, it has uh, become so familiar uh, that your mind will just yes. want that, that over and over exactly. and over until you break it. You get uh, so the moment you understand it, yes. it kind of expands yes. and just lets you go your yes. own way. Yes. So after I worked there for some time, and then I how I, long did I you had, work until you were like, I just can't take this anymore? For two years, two I was years. there for like two years, and then I was like, this isn't for me, yes. you know. Like, I would go to my desk when I'm done with everything, I would sit down and read. And I think reading kind of opens your mind to a point where you are okay taking the risk. Uh-huh. So I, I I took some time, you know, like debating, should I, should I not? But at the end of the day, yes. I just woke up one morning and really? told myself, no, this is it. This is it. This so, is it so, so reading to you at that point was more of an escape. Yeah, it was an escape. But it was an escape because it's something that you liked. It is something because that I like. somebody else, maybe they could have done something else. Yes, right? yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So I would read when I'm free, when I'm, I've, I've finished my duties, I would sit there and read. And I think through reading, I learned that you don't have to, like, settle. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. you can take the risk. I think most of us are afraid of taking the risk. The risk, yes. So we don't know what will happen. We don't know what will happen. Yes, yes. So I woke up one morning and I said, that was in Nairobi. No, this was it. This was it for me. Today, I've had enough. Mm. Then, by that time, I was dating um, a guy who was in Nakuru. Uh-huh. So, that's how I ended up 
in Nakoro. Ah, okay. Yes, okay. yes. Your husband now or yeah, somebody? My husband there? now. Okay. Yes. Okay. So like how did you guys meet? Ah, <laughs> we met <laughs> We met a while back. Yeah. We met uh in I think in 207 mm. post uh election. Yeah, we met during that time. Okay. Then uh, through uh, my cousins. Okay. Then after that, so I, a I was, yeah, a friend so of my cousins. It's very important, guys, for your cousins to have good friends. <laughs> yes, so if yes. your cousins, somebody have good friends, okay? You yeah. must just be introducing uh, yeah. a very beautiful family together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so after that, I went to uh, university. Okay. So post-selection happened when I was just about to join university, okay. by the way. Mm-hmm. So after that, we met, and then I went to university, and then it was just an on and off thing. Right. Then after that, I got a job, mm-hmm. then starting again. Yes. So when I, I resigned, mm-hmm. that's when I moved here. What was the what brought you to Nakoro? Or where so you one of one of the reasons mm-hmm. that made me resign was mm-hmm. that I got pregnant. Okay. You know, so when I realized that I I, I am pregnant mm-hmm. with my first child, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to raise the the child alone yes. because the father was here, yes. I decided now this was a good reason for me to resign. It was like a, a kind of a oh, push, like, you know, okay. Okay, like right, yeah. this is what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So immediately I resigned and moved here. So that we can at least start uh, raising a family together. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I was having a, a problem conceiving. Yes, yes. I had been having miscarriages yes. uh, before that. So um, when that happened, it was just an oops mm-hmm. kind of pregnancy because uh, I, I, I was going through depression at that time. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I had two consecutive miscarriages, mm-hmm. I just decided, okay, then I'll just be. So after three months, uh, I realized I was pregnant and I needed to take good care of myself. I needed to like slow down. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So I I decided, well, let me resign so that I can take better care of yes. this pregnancy. Mm-hmm. So it was l- those, uh, we were trying yes. to have kids. Mm-hmm. So when it happened, we, that's when we decided now, mm-hmm. let's sit down and start mm-hmm. a family. What led to the, to like the depression that you had at that point that you're saying that you are you're in a you're in sort of like a depression it was the miscarriages okay oh, so right. yeah right. when they happened i was still working by the way and i think uh part of the reason that what happened was the the the, the go stress. the rush from yes. nairobi the stress and you know when you're working alafo by that time you are a new employee and there's so much pressure for you to do this, to do this, to stand out, to perform. Mm-hmm. And then your body is trying to cope with, uh, because I had just cleared a school, I got in my job. So it was like, it was okay to start a family and all that yeah. because I was, I was okay. I was stable. I had the job, the income and everything. Mm-hmm. So having a child was okay for me. And the moment we started trying for that, mm-hmm. miscarriages happened. I kind of got into that depressive mode, you know, like... <clears throat> Everything is okay, but this one is not happening. Yes. Eh? So it kind of clouds everything mm. that you have, even if you're happy. Yes. 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 That, it makes you question your womanhood. Yes. So when that ha- started happening, my mood started changing poly mm. I started becoming mm. depressed. Mm. Eh? So that's what led to that uh, mood all through. Mm. So in all the mix-up of having work, being uh, pregnant, being depressed, and, and, and that's when I started realizing this job is not for me. So looking back, I kind of feel like God will remove you from a place that you don't want to get out yes. using anything Any that means. is possible. Yes. Mm. So that's how I ended up removing myself from that situation. Mm. Because the job was good and everything. We were uh, going outside the country, being sent. Yes. And... Um, when I resigned, like a dream job. yeah, I dream yes. job. And when I resigned, I had to lie to my dad, you know. Mm. Um, uh, because he was not for it. Yeah, he, he was, was not, not for it. And of course, there's no way he would have accepted yeah. that. Uh, what are you going to do? Hey, what are you going to do now? Start your own business. Mm. And we have been raised in an environment where you are not supported for starting your own initiative, uh-huh, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I, I had to figure it out from there. Yes. Mm. So I had to find a way to just cover that so that I can find a way to start my own ventures. Mm. Mm. Wow, okay. We're going to go on a short break and then we're going to come back and pick it up from there. Thank you guys very much. This is the Jason Show and my guest today is Esther. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> wow, awesome. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome guys. Uh, today my guest is a friend of mine uh, called Esther and she's sharing her story with us. Uh, she quit her job, NGO job. I think NGO is one job that everybody's <laughs> looking for out here, yes, literally. Yes, yes. 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 They are very generous in their salaries, yes. I think so. And mm-hmm. also, it has a lot of like uh, freedom mm-hmm. with like uh, the kind of work and things like that. But to somebody like you, mm-hmm. you didn't settle for it because of the money. Yeah. So Nabal, I think you'd be in a better position to give people advice on how to go around doing something that is meaningful to them. So you can just look at this camera and All right. <laughs> just say something small to somebody who's maybe in a certain job that they don't like. Uh, from your experience and just say something before like continue yes. so yes. in this life you can either have two types of experiences mm-hmm. you can either have the outer experience mm-hmm. which is uh, clouded by success and yes. everything mm-hmm. or you can either have the inner and the outer experience mm-hmm. what do I mean by that you can either have a balanced life where you are happy being contented first with who you are mm-hmm. and what you have then everything else on the outside just is okay, you know. Mm-hmm. So you can have the material success on the outside, but on the inside, <laughs> you're, you're not happy, you're not fulfilled, you're not contented. So even if you have the outside that is successful, you'll not be happy because the inside is not okay. Mm-hmm. And this is where uh, Jesus was saying, mm-hmm. first find the kingdom of heaven, yes. then Definitely. everything else on the outside will happen will be okay. Yes. So if you have contentment on the side, if you know who you are as a person, everything else on the outside will fall into place. So you might be having everything, the job, the everything, but on the inside you're not you're not okay, you're not content. There's still that feeling that makes you cloud the success on the outside. So you can choose to be content on the inside and everything outside will fall into yes. place. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a hard um, a hard yeah, shift like juggle, yeah. and, and, and juggling of that. But the first place you should start is being happy with yourself, being contented. Mm-hmm. If you have that, at a kazia NGO, everything else, zote. <laughs> but if you stick and cling to that so much, you'll have the money and be miserable. Mm. Like everyone will be, oh yes, you're happy, you have the job, but on the other side, you want to buy my drinks. Eh? Everyone is happy. You are miserable. But if you find contentment and fulfillment on the inside first, everything else, at a kama una your NGO job, you'll be happy. You'll be going to bed and saying at the end of the day, I'm doing this. Yeah, I'm doing this and I'm feeling. Uh, fulfilled and I'm happy with it. I think happiness is is worth gambling mm. and taking the risk mm. from shifting to just having everything on the outside mm. to just starting with yourself first. Mm. Mm. Because we we live in a generation right now, especially our generation right now, where people are not really contented. They want they want and they want and they want more. Mm. And part of that is because of social media, I guess so. Yes. It's because they want to present a certain kind of image mm-hmm. that this is who they are. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, this is what they have accomplished so far. Mm-hmm. Look at me. Mm-hmm. Let me prove it to you that I can do it at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Like I told you, I will do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am doing yeah, it. The yeah. way I said to mm-hmm. all my haters, mm-hmm. to all my haters that are watching right now, you know, <laughs> like, you know, I'll t- up, you know. You know, yes. that streams from I've learned this over time. Mm. It streams from childhood. Mm. When we were kids, we suffer so much trauma, especially in the African setting, such that you have to give up on yourself so that you can please other people. Mm. You have nothing going on for yourself. Mm. Because you can imagine in the African setting, a child is grown up to be seen, not to be heard. Mm. So your voice as a child, everything you have as a child is killed. Mm. Eh? Zote, you have nothing for yourself. And when you have nothing for yourself on the inside, you live for other people. Nataka ni fraishe uyu. Nataka, you know, you do things to please other people because the you that was supposed to give you, 
to be given to you as a child who's mm-hmm. taken away. Taken away. So mm-hmm. even for me right now, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to recover my voice because mm-hmm. I was grown, I grew up grew in that up setting of just keep quiet kids are supposed to be seen, not to be heard. Mm-hmm. And that's why people have so much self-esteem issues, you know, because they don't know who they have. They have nothing going on for themselves. The other day I was, I was talking about self-love. Mm-hmm. I was trying to teach people that it's okay to love yourself. It's okay to, that is where you have to start. But it's such a difficult thing for people to do because they haven't been taught that because self-love now feels like a selfish thing to them because you have grown up for 30 years doing things to please people doing things now take yourself out on a coffee date just yourself i need somebody to be there so that we can share the coffee you know i need i need i need for another not for yourself and the way this works and the way that self-love works is that you have to fill your own cup first so that you can you can be able to serve another in the best way possible. Because serving another from the point of misery makes you more miserable. Mm. You know. So the problem is we haven't been feeling ourselves eh? and growing up in such a setting mm. makes us more miserable. Yes. Yes. So I, I I think what you're also like explaining is more of you need to be content also with yourself. Yes. Because people right now I've seen this on hashtags mm-hmm. hashtag self love, but you're posting it all over social media for mm-hmm. people to like. Mm-hmm. You're like no 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 that's not self love guys. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. listen you're trying to please everybody. Mm-hmm. It's not because uh, for example if I was to do something for myself mm-hmm. I don't need to put it on social media. You don't need to put it. If I was to just go out and relax and have a cup of tea and just chill and just have a peace of mind because I've spent so much time on the computer. Mm-hmm. That is me appreciating myself and being contented with who I am, where I am, with the environment that I am, that I don't need to involve everybody else. Mm-hmm. The moment you start involving everybody else mm-hmm. is exactly proving the point that you've always been doing things for people. For people. And that is something that I usually like tell people. I'm like, okay, I see what you did there, but it is not exactly what you're saying that you did. Mm-hmm. Because you're saying you did this for yourself, mm-hmm. but the way you're portraying it out, the way you're showing it out, mm-hmm. it, was, it was for us. It, it, was, it was not <laughs> for you. It was for you to like fulfill something in your heart. Mm-hmm. So I think that that form of contentment is very important, especially to this gener- this social media generation. Mm-hmm. It's like you will you'll always want mm-hmm. them to accept mm-hmm. you. It's, it will always be like, and you'll never get satisfied because people will never ever put you in a place where they Everybody accepts you. Mm-hmm. There will always be a gap somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think it's all about balance. Yes. You can go out and have a cu- cup of tea mm-hmm. on yourself, mm-hmm. take a selfie take and a selfie post, post and it, post. Yes. Mm-hmm. That is okay, yes, you know. Yes, yes. And you can also go out and have a cup of coffee on your own and not post. And that is okay. It's all about balance. You know, I don't need to prove the, the a point. Exactly. Uh, yeah. That is the point. Yeah. Because for me, you can do that and post it. You're like, uh, I'm, I'm yeah. still okay or cool. cool yes. this, right? mm-hmm. But you can put, put it so that you can see what people are going to say. Mm-hmm. So it's all like, again, it goes back to the heart. Mm-hmm. You being content and totally okay. So that mm-hmm. we, even when you do something, mm-hmm. it's not about, it's not about people. Mm-hmm. So about, even when you post it mm-hmm. and somebody's like uh, say something bad, mm-hmm. it does not really get it to doesn't you. It doesn't bother yes, you, exactly. you know. Because yeah. That was not the intention. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. yes. So and this is where books come in. Exactly. So I've resigned my job. Yes. I've 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 gotten my first child, mm-hmm. Arthur. Yes. Then when he was about three months, I yes. started the cafeteria. Yes. Then uh, I ran it for like uh, some time. When it, it didn't work out, mm-hmm. then I shifted now to books. Because w- while I was at the cafeteria, I was still reading too much, you know. Uh-huh. Like when I'm not busy, all I'm doing is reading. reading yes. Now I'm, I'm sitting there. I, I remember I, I remember one of, I think it was on a Saturday. I'm just sitting there and looking at people. <laughs> then I noticed our generation, we are all young. Like yes. out on Amzea, I'm just oh, seeing okay, here. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. then I realized there was a... Um, disconnect, you know, like we don't have people who will advise us, you know, the way we grew up being told those stories are like Kakasungura and all that, and grandmother telling a story of I don't know who did what and the consequences. We don't, we don't, yeah, we don't have that. And the other day I was reading a book, um, A Return to Love, it is my current read right now. And when the author starts, he says that our generation, we are so fearful, we have a lot of fear because. We have been exposed to so much and we feel that we cannot measure up. Mm. And that is where the problem comes in. We are not afraid that we can't do these things. We are afraid because we know we cannot do, we can do them, but we don't know how to do them. Mm. 
So that fear is kind of like a prison we are in as a generation. So books for me have become a way that I can learn beyond the norm. Mm -hmm. And my passion for books is because it, it got me from a place where instead of being depressed, mm. I learned that I can get myself from that situation. That I don't have, uh, I don't have to be that, you know, like, and one of the most important things I learned is that you can choose, you know, you can choose to either have the emotion or the progress. Mm. Here you are, you are sad, you are depressed, JR and Corsair, you know, like, situations are happening all around me eh? so i can choose to either have the emotions that come from that situation or progress you understand i can choose to leave the emotions and take step and step out, out of it and just progress to another level because the moment you have the emotion you have decided that is the prize you want you when you're in a situation like that what you get out of it is the prize Yes. And if it if it is the heart and the emotions and all that, mm -hmm. that is like the prize you get out of that situation. That's what you've decided oh. is going to be the prize. And there's so much hate in this world because we have decided to take that as the prize. Like Unona what wanna kosananga, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Umeni kosea. Yes. Then I, by the time we are leaving each other, I go away with that emotion. So I've decided this is what I want to keep from this situation this is the prize i'm taking and that's why it's so difficult for people to move on because they have decided this they, is my prize they're going to take the worst of that yes situation. but we can sit here to neza koseana we can argue then i decide well i felt bad about that situation but i'm not going to keep that emotion i'm going to rise above it and i'm going to move on and i'm free you know, and that's w what books help you understand. They teach you that besides what you have learned in school, there's more about life. Your mind kind of opens up to different scenarios. It gives you ideas. So the reason why I encourage people to read is because from books, you get the life experience here, JR, the life experience here, Malcolm S, the life experience here, Obama, the life, you know, you become a... Uh, it's How like you a, live pool, a, lives a pool, a pool, exactly. Life. Like you live a thousand lives in you. You become like the central person with se several pools to mm -hmm. pull from. So when you find yourself in a situation, you look around and you decide what do I want to do from this situation? Because you just, you know, the way life teaches us is keep the emotion. Mm -hmm. That's what life teaches you. And that's where most people are. We keep the emotion. But books will teach you you don't have yes. to Keep the emotion. Yes. And that's why reading gives you, you know, several you ideas. Know, yes. Ideas. And if and when you look around, our culture is not big on books. Mm -hmm. We are to go to school. 844, <laughs> Maliza. <laughs> I have <I>, <laughs> met the people who come to the bookshop and, and the other day I had an, an interesting conversation with a friend and I'm like, Mimi, I've tried, I've tried reading, but <laughs> Like a friend has encouraged, but I told her it's because you have already decided you don't want to read. So I gave her an interesting book. It's um, a re mm, The Rhythm of Life by Matthew Kelly. I gave her that book and I told her, sit here. I just want you to read the first chapter because the book is, is uh, structured in small, small chapters. Do you know, she just sat there and read and read and she told me, I'm taking this one. Huh? It's because we, we already have that idea yeah, in, that in our mind that reading is boring, yes. nini, nini. It's because we just don't like being with ourselves. I just realized yes. that. And books mm. causes you to be with yourself. Exactly. Just sit there yeah. and, and be with yourself. Well, yes, be with yourself <laughs> and then take yourself, take, take your life experiences, mm -hmm. take it out, out. a little bit, uh -huh. read, mm -hmm. But also related with your life experience, sure. mm -hmm. and you just don't want that comparison. That exactly, you're like, no, you know, <laughs> I just want to forget all this mm -hmm. life experience that I've had, mm -hmm. and maybe I can just watch a movie. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, where mm -hmm. it's all about all those people and all this mm -hmm. action is about mm -hmm. the thing that's happening in the TV. Mm -hmm. And once in a while, maybe me, but mm -hmm. it's entirely that. Mm -hmm. But books causes you to think, mm -hmm. causes you to put yourself in that situation, causes you to analyze your life mm -hmm. in a way that it's so analytical that most people are not comfortable doing that. And that brings us back to the original mm -hmm. uh, uh, point mm -hmm. that you need to be contented with who you are. Yes. And there's something that you said another time that books helped you to uh, not to 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 uh, not concentrate on your story, mm -hmm. like put your story aside mm -hmm. and put yourself in another story. 
like True. just concentrate there and because you needed that. Yes, that's the the yes. best part about books. Yes. They take you out of your own story, mm -hmm. and the moment you you get out of your own story, you realize, hey, yeah, by the way, it can be better. Yeah. It can be better than the way I've had it, mm -hmm. the way I've been taught to have it. Yeah. So having that moment mm -hmm. of you, there's there's a book by Joe Dispenza yeah. titled The Art. Huh? breaking the art of being yourself yes. the moment you break that art of being yourself you can learn something else you know mm -hmm. the moment you break the habit of being the angry person you mm -hmm. can learn how to be a happy person mm -hmm. so books help you do that mm -hmm. they help you break the habit of being yourself mm -hmm. because now when i'm sitting down reading something you are taking in someone else point of view mm -hmm. someone else thought someone else you know and they kind of diffuse into your own thinking and you start learning ah by the way it can get better mm -hmm. so that's the best part about books mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's why i try to encourage people to read mm -hmm. to introduce books to their children mm -hmm. people need to be taught how to talk mm -hmm. how to express themselves mm -hmm. because when you have an idea you can express yourself because now you know it's okay for you to talk but growing up in that kind of uh setup where you're told your work is to be seen mm -hmm. and yeah, not heard yes, it kind of it it, it it dumps you down mm -hmm. so the moment you learn how to fix those self-esteem issues mm -hmm. you become a totally new person mm -hmm. so children will learn you know the classroom setting right now doesn't teach them those things it's all about you just really do homework they do homework nin, 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 nin. Mm -hmm. they need the, it's okay for the school setup but you need to balance by telling your kids that they are worthy mm -hmm. they have a voice mm -hmm. and it's okay for them to speak up mm -hmm. that you'll hear them mm -hmm. but most parents don't know they still do that uh parenting that they they had mm -hmm. as kids mm -hmm. and um, when their children speak up yes. they find it um offensive yes mm? why yeah, are you talking you, about how the, how the how dare you yes. talk like that to you're me just you know a kid. you're just a kid you're not supposed to talk but children are human beings and they are worthy of having a voice to express themselves mm -hmm. and the moment you teach your children that they have a voice they can express themselves they will thrive mm -hmm. mm? they will know when i have an issue see sit on your mother i'll go tell mom about it now at an excuse and that also mm. makes them a better pe better people because when they grow up they don't have to settle for for less sure. mm -hmm. and they don't have to um, do something just because they've been told mm -hmm. if it is wrong mm -hmm. they can say you know what this is wrong and i'm not going to do it yes. but if they are always told you just shut up mm -hmm. and follow mm -hmm. then you don't you're not really doing very you're not really doing well good for your kids mm -hmm. because you're not going to be with them forever yeah. they'll have to be released to the world at, at a certain point mm -hmm. and if they're released without the value structure that their opinions matter mm -hmm. and what they have to say is important mm -hmm. and they have to be responsible for what they say and how they think they'll settle to be followers yes. they'll not be leaders yes. mm. if you meet my 6 year old right now you'll be how do i put it but it's because he has grown up in an environment where he knows it's okay for me to speak mm -hmm. because when we are making decisions we ask him yes. are you okay with it mm -hmm. arthur do you want yes. uh this and this yes. like we treat him as a normal human being yes. who is worthy of consideration of being asked mm -hmm. so it's because not he all is. he is actually it's not all about making decisions for him do you want to wear this yeah do you want to go because they have feelings and we assume children don't have feelings we have to make or and that is where the problem starts now yes. eh? you start having those self esteem issues mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. but the moment you start reading you realize that you can unlearn those behavior mm -hmm. and uh, my best uh, genre is um a non fiction mm -hmm. um, i love reading non fiction non books yes. because for me i realized when i started i was reading fiction mm -hmm. by the way mm -hmm. then i realized there's this side of uh, uh non fiction that mm -hmm. will help you fix issues that you have mm -hmm. so i read a lot of non fiction and i've learned so much from non fiction mm -hmm. books eh? mm -hmm. so i i love starting people so when somebody comes to me and they want to start the habit of reading i start them on non fiction first mm -hmm. i tell them you have to go reality you yeah you, you have reality true you have to learn how to handle reality mm -hmm. you have to learn how to to be with yourself first because that's what books will do to you they'll bring the attention back to yourself who are you eh? what do you want 
what do you uh, think about yourself because your own opinion about yourself matters more be- than what people think about you if you think you're good that matters more than what the entire mass will think about your opinion so the moment you start reading about yourself you learn so much about yourself then you can venture out into fiction yes you learn your fiction more yes. so here you are you decided cafeteria it is mm-hmm. i'm going to do this i'm going mm-hmm. to be the best but i'm going to read <laughs> while i'm doing it and then you're like maybe just this is just not it mm-hmm. so how did that shift to you you know into books now and having a book hub and starting all that so i was as i was reading at the, at the cafeteria i used to share whatever i'm reading online then I would realize people would want, where can I get this book? Where can I get this book? Because for me, I used to uh, travel all the way to Nairobi to get my books. So and then I realized there's that demand for books, but people don't know where to yes. get them. So slowly by slowly, I would read a book. If somebody wants it, I sell it to them. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. Then I realized I can do this, by the way. Mm-hmm. I can start... A business of um, selling storybooks yes. peke ake. because there are people who would also ask you I want those academic books no, no. my business I just deal with storybooks only so I started uh, uh, buying and selling buying and selling online kidogo kidogo, kidogo, kidogo tuile, uh, on and off on and off then eventually I jumped into it full time mm. so I set up the book hub Pole pole. I started first by sharing space. Mm. Then as it grew, I moved into my own shop. To you, and I think to even most people, even to myself, it's always about what is it that you like. Mm-hmm. What, because that is how you know God gives your purpose, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You just don't wake up one day and you're like this multimillionaire that mm-hmm. is thinking about you know doing going to space. So you start building a rocket. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all about do you love electronics? Are you just so drawn to movies? Mm-hmm. Are you drawn to talking to people? Mm-hmm. You know, and from there you start to learn. Okay, so this is something that I can actually pursue. Mm-hmm. So to you, it was as you started reading books, and you're like, I really like this. Mm-hmm. You started posting it online, mm-hmm. and people are like, ah, I really want that. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wait, mm-hmm. I can actually sell it to them. Mm-hmm. And from that point, mm-hmm. it starts to you mm-hmm. know grow, 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 grow. Yes. yes. So. It, we we narrow it back to our childhood, the fear of being seen. Nobody wants to be seen starting small. And the other day I was telling my brother, um, he wanted to start a mtush business, selling jackets. Though he was kind of delaying, you know, like... You don't want to be seen. Ni yeah. mm-hmm. just start. Because mm-hmm. of a certain picture. Yeah, you yeah. Yes. Everybody wants to be seen yes. making yes. it. Yes. Eh? And what we don't want is the failure. But I told him, failure is part of the process. And the moment you start learning pole, 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 you realize there isn't, there's joy in having your own money. Mm-hmm. Eh? So the moment you learn, ah, this joy can override the fear of people and people want to see their money, mm-hmm. You kind of get out of that fear of being scared of being yeah. seen. So the other day he came and told me, ah, yeah, yeah, I wish I had started this earlier. Early eh? yeah. like, it's because we don't understand ourselves. We don't understand that it is the fear that we have that keeps us into that prison of being scared of being seen. So our generation is afraid of that, being seen, starting small. What are you doing? No, but... Because success. What people, what people are going to say. Hey, what are people yes. going to say? But success is a process, mm. and we have to learn how to respect the process. Mm. The problem is we don't respect the process, and that's something that I've learned also mm. over time. We are afraid. We are afraid of respecting the process of success because we want to start big. Mm. Eh? But even building a house, you don't start big it's, it's only us who want to we want to start big but for anything worthwhile anything that is yours that will take um that you want to take pride in you have to be willing to start small mm-hmm. start one step nila the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step so you have to learn with you have to learn how to take that single step and i think um our problem as a generation neo being seen 
being seen struggling. I, I, I usually tell people, allow people to see you struggle mm-hmm. so that when they see you thrive, mm-hmm. they'll, they'll understand yes. that it was a process. Yes. But see, respect. see, we hide, we hide the struggle. And mm-hmm. when, when the striving comes, tunanda kuwaonyesha, yeah. then they yeah. start saying, Ali join Illuminati. You know, like, that is where those quotes come, we those allegations. Uh, <laughs> we just found that solution, guys. People if everybody don't. been telling you that you join Illuminati, Illuminati, it's because they didn't see the sweat. Yeah, they, didn't, they didn't see, see the, the sweat. The sweat. They didn't see you struggle yes. uh, you didn't show them you took that part it's probably are we? because you actually did uh, yeah <laughs> yeah and some people yeah. they don't understand yes. and they are wondering how how do you get from a yes. to z yes. we didn't see we did we didn't see you struggle we didn't see you s- uh, how so they kind of because you have not shown them that process, they kind of trash it, you know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I tell people, allow people to see you struggle. Wow, eh? wow. Show them your struggle. I'm struggling with this. Mm-hmm. So that when you, because success has that failure part, mm-hmm. they'll understand that there was failure of a failure of a failure. And, you'll be and a then, big inspiration. Yeah, and, and there was that part of you struggling through it. And then finally, here comes the glory moment if you want to be a writer you don't want to the struggle you just want to wake up and you're a writer mm-hmm. if you want to be the musician you don't want to go through the struggle mm-hmm. of practicing, mm-hmm. practicing day and yes, yes. you want the glory you want so the fame. Yes. true so most people especially because of social media and all that they want the glory the fame and all that without working for it and that's where the frustration comes in mm? but when you understand that success is a process and you are willing to respect that process and you can't skip any and you can't skip any of nobody it nobody has ever done it and it will never be done yes. <laughs> yes you know when it comes to business i remember my my relatives my family telling me ah Business is not somebody for somebody like you. Yeah, Sarah, because our set is not big on startups. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they where were Maliza Shule, you, you get employed, get employed yes. and work for somebody else. Mm-hmm. But working for your own, for yourself, nobody will carry you for that. Mm-hmm. So it was a struggle because now nobody wants uh, to be seen struggling with your own thing, you know. So people will not come support you. They'll just stand by and watch you struggle. When the glory comes in, they will hi yeah, by the way. Ah, it was to work. But when you are going yeah. through the struggle, through the struggle of creating when something that I have struggle cafeteria na vitu zake nini nini. For anyone who wants to start reading, reading is that one habit that will will teach you so much in this life mm. that nobody will teach you. Mm. So for anyone who wants to start reading, I always ask them questions. Which area of your life do you want to work on? You know, there's akuna mtu mwenyapendi vitabu. It's just that the person has not found the right book, the right genre for them. So they might have started out on in the wrong book and they just turned their mind off. But whatever uh, the issue is, is that you have not find the, found the right book for you. So if you want to start reading, come to me. I'll help you. We'll do one. Kuna what? We start one sentence in a day. Just one. <laughs> That's good. And, and, That's and good because it becomes progress, though, right? yeah, and it becomes like a building block. Learn mm-hmm. mesoma sentence moja. Learn mesoma half chapter. Learn, and as you keep reading, you realize, by the way, I can read. This is what I need. So come, I'll help you I tell, nurture I tell, that I tell, habit I tell, of reading. I, I tell I tell people that also, but people people just don't get it. You don't have to do something big. Like like for example, if you're working on your character, working on yourself, mm-hmm. working on a certain addiction, mm-hmm. you don't have to do something big. Mm-hmm. You can say, okay, so this is where I am, this is my struggle, this is the problem, okay? How can I start, how can I solve it today or this week Mm -hmm. that would make a difference? If you look at it from a timeline of two years, if you say, I'll be reading one sentence Mm -hmm. or or one page Mm -hmm. per day, just Mm -hmm. one page per day, which Mm -hmm. is less than, let's say, you know, 20 minutes, Mm -hmm. Just one page, no matter how, bo- how big the book is, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it can be less than 20 minutes, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you decide to do that, or one sentence, or one chapter, or, one, or whatever it is, mm-hmm. can you imagine if you stretch that within 12 months? Mm-hmm. You'll have made a very, very big progress. But because we are always uh, uh-huh. in the mentality of, you know, big, you know, mm-hmm. I want to finish yeah, this book, big. you know, I, I want to do this, you know, I want to do this, it gets overwhelming, you just give up. 
Uh -huh. Our generation, two things, fast and big. That's our problem. Mm -hmm. We want things fast and we want to be big. <laughs> and even God didn't start there, surely. <laughs> the light, eh? Just finish with the lights first eh, of all. Fast, eh? <laughs> he, he, eh it, will, he, 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 it was about process. You yes. know, even God started yes. from mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. And um, from uh, the book, uh, The Atomic Habits, you learn that it's all about process, building blocks. Mm -hmm. And the one of the problems with uh, our habits is that we focus on the goal. Mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. And that was a big aha moment for me mm -hmm. because I wanted to lose weight. I wanted to get to 60 kgs. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you get to 60 kgs? You relax. Yes. Then yeah, you find yourself... You um, and, bread, yes. uh, KFC. Uh -huh. <laughs> And uh, when you stop doing those things that you are doing, yeah. you find yourself um again weight badu. Yeah. So it in a kuwa like a cycle um again um lose um again um lose. But in that book, James Anakuonyesha, you don't need to focus on the goal. Focus on the process. The goal will take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So I focus on healthy eating, you know, because then I, I won't be on this loop of gaining yes. and losing and gaining because I built the process, mm -hmm. the system that ensures it that. It also become a habit. It is not just an event mm -hmm. that you do that today you will take Then when to celebrate now, uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to celebrate na, na, so Ice cream, na pizza, na ni ni ni. Having having a, a process, the yes. process mm -hmm. it frees you. Yes from having to focus on just one goal yes. because the process will give you so many benefits. Mm -hmm. So I think yes. people should start reading mm -hmm. and focus on the process and not the goal. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyone who wants to start reading, I'll help them through mm -hmm. the process. Awesome. It won't be Nataka Kusoma, 100 books in a day. It will be which habits do I want to form? Mm -hmm. Who do I want to be at the end of this? Yes. yes. Awesome. So mm -hmm. we are going to go on a short break. Uh, we are going to give you a few chapters. All <laughs> right, first. I will and then totally when you come back, <laughs> you will uh, you will give us a, a small snippet of uh, of reading from you from whatever it is that you're reading right now, whatever uh -huh. book that you're reading right now uh -huh. that can also help people encourage them and uh, into reading. So yeah, thank you very much. I hope you come back again. We can, I we, will. can we can we can take we can take this even much more deeper. Okay. Now this time we can be able to pick a specific thing and okay. just like exhaust it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh says it to me, you know, just like gone all through it so mm -hmm. so that at least people get to know you a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um you uh you have Mystic Book uh Book Hub yes. in Akuru. Yes. Uh, could you give people the location where that is? And, so yes. you can find us at Neymar Plaza opposite Uchumi Business Center. That's where we are, shop B1. You can find me there. And for those in Nairobi, I have an, uh, an outlet, mm -hmm. a pickup point mm -hmm. for books. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So they can mm -hmm. just, uh, we'll put our social medias or our contacts uh, on the description so mm -hmm. that you all can just go and, you know, check out her books. Like 90% of the books that I have are from her, by the way. Yes. So yes. I'm also. <laughs> so please get a book from her. Uh, I know if if you if you watch this and you come into contact with her for the first time, uh Mwambi Jera Mekutuma. So thank you, thank you very, 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 very much. I appreciate you coming over and talking to me and uh, you know, trying to unpack these things for our generation, for the future generation, yes. and also do something meaningful for you know in our life, right? Yes. Amen. Thank you.
Thank yeah. you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hello. Welcome back to the show. So there's one book that I always uh, work with. It has become such a big part of my life. And uh, it's titled The Secret of Staying in Love by John Powell. I was telling uh, JR that we want to be in love. We want to be in love with life. We want to be in love with ourselves. We want to be in love with other people, but we don't know how to. There's a block between us and ex the expression of love. And us being in love and living uh, 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 our lives fully is the glory of God. If we learn how to do that, we will be happy ourselves, you know. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to experience love in our hearts and with other people. And that's why Jesus gave the biggest law is love God, love another, and love yourself. And if we can learn how to do that, the world will be right. So I'm going to read from this book, a little from this book. And the point is to understand why John is, is emphasizing why love is very important. So on page 13, he says, I've read this before. So if you hear it for the second time, well, I'm good. Uh, the fundamental human need. Man is not simple. He's a composite of body, mind, and spirit. And he has needs on all three levels of his experience. He has needs and appetites that are physical, psychological, and spiritual. Frustration at any one of these levels can produce agony in the whole organism. I hope you understand that. If any aspect of your life, your well-being, is frustrated, you will not live a happy life. However... There is a growing consensus of opinion that there is one need so fundamental and so essential that if it is met, everything else will almost certainly harmonize in a general sense of well-being. When this need is properly nourished, the whole human organism will be healthy and the person will be happy. And the person will be what? Happy. This need is a true and deep love of self, a genuine and joyful self-acceptance, and an authentic self-esteem, which result in an interior sense of celebration. It is good to me. It is good to be me. I'm very happy to be me. So what uh, John is doing in this book, he's showing that as human beings, we have several needs, but one of the most important need is being able to love yourself just as you are, accepting yourself as you are, and having a healthy sense of self-esteem. Everything will start falling into place. And further into the page, on page 19, he shows us where the origin of the problem is. So on page 19, titled The Origin of Our Problems, he says, of course, it all begins in, the, in those most important years of any human life, the first two. A baby is born into this world like a living question searching for answers. Who am I? What am I worth? What, what is life about? What am I supposed to be and to do? The answer starts coming immediately. If a child receives an abundance of affection, hugs, kisses, lullabies, laughing, warmth, he will begin hearing optimistic and joyful answers in his questions. A child has questions. And the way that he lives in, the, in, that, in those first two years answers those questions. He will begin hearing optimistic and joyful answers to his questions. They will slip into him and indebly recorded there. He will begin to know the one thing he needs to know most. I am lovable. I don't have to do anything or be anything but myself. I am valuable and worthwhile in myself. Just the way the kid is. He knows he's loved. He's worthwhile. He doesn't have to be or do anything to be loved. He is just loved for who he is, for being a human being. And when a child learns that in, that in those first two years, it gets into his subconscious mind and he learns he is valuable and he's wanted. However, if his parents, and especially his mother, with whom he presumably has most contact, are unable or unwilling to express affection, if they are cold and matter-of-fact irritated by the baby's middle-of-the-night needs or impatient with his uh, with his needs, the infant will he, 
will in his own way absorb those facts. The nonverbal communication of this irritation, displeasure, or even anger is recorded forever in the human organism of the child. Somehow, the baby senses that he has caused this reaction. He is not only recording these messages, but he also is recording his own emotional responses of doubt, anxiety, and insecurity. They will play back to him and in his and in him for the rest of his life. So John shows us that our problems as young society, the Lianza to cure our total, how we were treated by our parents. Because as I said before, I, I grew up in an environment where a child was supposed to just be seen and not heard. And most of us were not told we were loved, we were worthwhile, we were not appreciated or praised for who we are. We were told, unless you do this, that's when we'll get the praise. But if you learned that you are loved for being a human being, just the way you are, you'll develop a healthy sense of self-esteem, you'll enjoy being yourself, and everything else on the outside will fall into place. So let us all learn how to go back to love. Let us all learn how to return ourselves to love. Because the moment we learn how to return ourselves to that aspect of love, we will be happier, we will be more healthy, we will enjoy this magnificence of life that is is. So my parting shot is learn how to love how to love yourself how to love your neighbor how to love god and everything else will be added onto you so we will stop singing about love we will stop wishing and and uh, and uh, fantasizing about love and we will go out there and love people love ourselves and love god and at the end of the day we will enjoy life more learn how to love Erich Fromm, in his book, uh, The Art of Loving, he says that l loving is something to be learned. The way you are right now, you cannot love. Unless you are, you are taught how to love, you will not love. So he says that learning how to love is just as important as the way we learn chemistry, the way we learn how to be doctors, it is a process that we have to learn. Because right now, because of the experiences you have, when I say, ah, love is hard, love is, uh, you know, you have those opinions in your head that are blocking you from loving. So you have to unlearn those opinions. You have to unlearn what you have seen. You have to learn. Because in life, you experience what you are. You don't experience what you want. You experience what you are. If you are loving, you experience love. If you are hateful, that's exactly what you experience. So learning Besides, you don't know how to love yourself. You have to be willing. By the way, siju kujipenda. Mimi sijui. Na nataka kujua kujipenda. What do you do? You find a book that will teach you how to love. You find a podcast. You go to YouTube. You ask, how do I learn to love myself? How do I learn to love God? How do I learn to love my neighbor? You learn. And when you take up that task of learning, when you build those habits of learning, a step by step, step by step, at the end of it, you learn how to love. You stop wishing and you'll start doing. So start learning. That is my parting word. Start learning how to love. When you learn how to love yourself, how to love God, everything else falls into place. God will add you the rest. Thank you. Yes. The whole issue of love is very important. So at the end of the day, we think of it from the perspective of God. God is the, God is the definition of what love is. In fact, he says that God is love. If you love God first, then you know this other love falls in place perfectly well. So the love of God is the supreme love above everything else. If you love God, you know, self kind of, you know, just fall into place in its rightful place. So um, thank you very, very much today for joining us, for joining this show, the Jason show. Uh, keep on commenting, subscribing, share with your friends. But uh, thank you very, very much. And until next time, bless you.